What's going on guys? Uh, it's Nolan here and if you're wondering why my name is Nolan because you're a uh, uh, viewer from past uh, uh, videos um, it's because I changed my name to Nolan because uh, I like coding and stuff and you know, a lot of times in coding you set, you set stuff equal to null and also my name is Nolan I, just, I don't know I just thought it was cool it's pretty nerdy I might change it sometime but uh, I don't know I think it's cool so Anyway, this is going to be our first SDL2 tutorial. Um, SDL2 slash C++ tutorial, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the first thing we want to do is include our IO stream. And this is basically the default thing you're going to include whenever you're writing C++ programs. And so the number one thing you want to do, uh, I'm using the Windows operating system, so you have to do this. So you have to type in, so this is going to be our int main function. So int is integer. And then main um, this is going to be the main function, so we're already going to make a function, I'll get into actually making functions later. Um, <coughs> so anyway, so without an it main function, you don't have any program at all. Your computer sees this main, and it knows that that is what to run. Okay, so you can make a ton of different functions and stuff, but if you, if you don't have a function called int main, your program's just not going to start. It's not going to start, and nothing's going to even happen ever, you know, no matter what you do you need an in main so um, so since I'm a Windows operating system user and I'm gonna be using the SDL2 library I'm gonna have my integer um, argc then a char argv it, since it's um, okay we'll get into arrays later but uh, it's an array so you put those two little lines right there that's really not important right now you really don't have to know anything about this all you need to know is that if you're on Windows that's what you do on I think on Linux it's a little bit different I think there's different ways of writing uh, writing it anyway. That's how I'm gonna write. It, okay, so that's how I learned how to write it. So, <coughs> uh, so I'll tell you guys how to put SDL in your project. So I just called it delete because I'm deleting this later. It's just for a tutorial. So, um, so you're gonna go. I'm using Video Studio 2012 for uh, um, desktop. So, uh, I went to my project properties in general. And then in here, I went to, so I have a ton of different libraries, or SDL type of library things in. So basically, you'll hear you go there, uh, click that little button, find the place where you download SDL. Uh, so how you do that, I'll put a link in the description on the website to download SDL uh, too. And so you just go to the development thing, libraries, and download the Visual Studio one. But So you click your include folder, then select that. Then you go to uh, linker, then general, and then you go to, uh, so you go here, then you just find your, okay, so let me go to it. You find your library folder, then you go to x86, which is 32-bit. Uh, actually, pretty sure it's 32-bit. I heard someone say that, so I, I don't know. Uh, usually 64, I don't know, uh, 64 I thought would be 64-bit, I mean 32-bit, and then 86 would be 64-bit, uh, but Okay, I'm just gonna use 86. I mean, that's what I'm using. I really don't know. It's um, that's what I'm using. So, and it's working. Um, so all you need to put in right here right now is um, so you need to go to the linker tab, then input, and then sdl2.lib, and then sdl2.main.lib. So this is just gonna include the uh, .lib files from your SDL project, and just apply OK. Uh, I'm just gonna do cancel because I already have that. <coughs> so anyway. So how you're going to include your SDL is you're going to do hashtag include or pound sign include sdl.h. So you're including the SDL library headed files. Uh, so yeah. So so that's going to be like all your SDL library right there. Um, so how do you initialize SDL? So you have to type in SDL underscore init and then SDL underscore init. So you might want to type in everything. You might want to just type in... Um, so everything will initialize every single thing in the SL library, um, but if you just want to initialize a certain thing, like so, you could either do, you could do audio, you could do video, a uh, ton of other stuff. So I'm just gonna initialize the video because you do I initialize other things whenever you're not even using them. Um, you can just initialize them whenever you need them, and then always after you do SQL underscore init, you need to do SQL underscore quit. And it's a function, so you just do this little. It takes no parameters. You just put a semicolon at the end. <coughs> so, yeah. Uh, so this is gonna be an SDL slash C plus uh, plus tutorial. So, um, that's how you get SDL started. Now, um, since we're not using, so usually in C plus plus you would do 
um, you would type in using so using oh my god my typing is off namespace std which means standard uh, no it does not mean whatever you're thinking it means standard so it's using the standard library of SDL I mean C++ but instead of doing that we're just gonna say SDL colon colon C out so this means console output and <coughs> so what I'm gonna say is uh, I don't know hello world because that's what every single person has said uh, whenever they first started programming so they said hello world and then you do std and l and also instead of doing std and l you could just do slash n but uh, we're just gonna do end l I don't even know just just do end l it's a good habit to form because not all the time you're gonna have a string inside of there this is called a string by the way uh, it's a series of characters uh, in between um, parentheses or not parentheses uh, quotation marks um, so you can either do slash n if you have a string in there but usually sometimes you're only going to be wanting to see variables so that's why you're going to have to do an end out at the end to end the line and keep it spaced out and looking neat and so this is going to be our first program and also at the end you need to return zero since this is a integer function we can get more into that right now or uh, not right now <laughs> later uh, so this is going to be your first program so if I run this program press F5 you'll see that it just opens up a window and then it just closes automatically and the reason why it does that is because um, all the program knows to do is it says okay here's your main function so okay in the initialized video okay right to the console hello world okay quit then return zero okay just that's it that's all it knows to do it just does that in order so in order to slow this process down you do SDL underscore delay and then you type in the amount of milliseconds you want it to. So for three seconds, it would be 3,000 milliseconds. So this would be, so I'll type in milliseconds. Oops. Oh my god, you guys are so bad at typing or being recorded. I don't know why. Anyway, so we're delaying um, the program for uh, three seconds before it quits. So now if I do this, you'll see Hello World three seconds and then stop <coughs> another area you guys might get is um, sorry about that uh, I was in a escape call with my friends um, anyway another area you guys you probably see is so right here so delete um, you'll probably see something about uh, you're not having an SDL2 inside of there and so you need your SDL2.dlo in there um, so here's I include I have tons of different libraries included so I'm sorry about that um, but this is what you need. So what you do to get that SDL2.dll is you need to go to your um, development thing that you that you downloaded your library x86. Copy this, copy this file, and you go to uh, wherever you saved your project. Double click that, or sorry, no, you don't double click that. So you just double click here, debug, and then you put it where your .dxe file is located. So I have my SDL2.dll in here already. Um, I'll keep my Visual Studio open now. All right, so. Uh, that's how you, that's well that will solve the error. So that's how you write the console. Uh, you just use console output. And so um, I really really want to focus on SDL because SDL is going to make your life so much easier whenever you're writing in C++ code. And it's uh, SDL is usually made for using 2D making 2D video games. And I'll um, okay so right really really quick I'll show you guys a uh, little example of a game that I want to make. So uh, let me just zoom out super quick so you can't see all my code. I don't really know. Um, I just don't want anyone copy my stuff because uh, I am actually working on this game. I want it to become a real game. Um, so let me build it and then run it. And okay, so <laughs> it's just a simple title screen that I made in Photoshop. It's actually not going to be the real title screen, obviously. Uh, I just call it Larry Game because it's about a lizard named Larry. So I have working. So if you press Q, it'll quit the game. Then, <coughs> so it's actually not press space. I made it press P, uh, but I haven't updated the image. So press P, and so I don't have any gravity in it yet. But um, this also is a rectangle that I'm using for a later thing. But I actually have working collision, so you cannot go out of your um, window. Uh, you there's also collisions. There's an invisible rectangle right here. Wait, where is it? 
right here this is an invisible rectangle but okay so i have it set up to where the background moves with the player um i'm just showing you guys a bit of things you can do with sdl so this is what i have made with sdl so far i did this all from scratch and i've worked in collisions you can you can't go out of the thing right there and then if i go all the way down here this is taking a long time because i have the mood speed uh set to pretty low it's set to two pixels per uh, frame so anyway Oh, so I can go really, really fast whenever I'm down here, and I just speed through this little map. And in my game, you touch uh, some sunglasses to stop it. This actually is not the sprite that I'm going to be using. It's just the one I made in Photoshop. And then, to show you guys, uh, your guy cannot get out of there. It has to touch the sunglasses to win the game. So, uh, anyway, that's just what I've made in SDL. Uh, I actually want this to become a real game. Um, I and you guys don't see this, but I this is a background. And I made this inside of the background, but there's really a rectangle under this guy. There's also a rectangle that is about right here to right here, uh, same height as width as this guy, but it's invisible, and that's what's actually giving me my collisions. Um, and also, so I play a game called Counter Strike Global Offensive, and in there uh, you can actually turn on um, oh, I forgot what the command is, but there's a console can there's a console command where it, like shows. Um, like the person's body like where you hit them or something and you can see all of the different little rectangles or not rectangles but cubes in that case it's a 3d game you, the bodies that they make um the collision boxes are all little cubes so um they have their actual player models but under the player models what you don't see is tons and tons of little boxes where bullets can hit and they all do different amounts of damage if the bullet does collide with them but that is just um, a little bit of a game that I made. Uh, it's actually not done. It's uh, obviously not done. But I'm going to keep on working on it. And I hope to actually be done with it by about March. And I'm recording this in like the beginning of February. So, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys what I've made. And uh, what I'll be kind of teaching you how to do. But this video will be very, very simple.